yeah, uh, it was um, a nice meal after the game. A few quiet glasses of wine, back to the hotel. A few family and friends over for everyone. Yeah, a few drinks in the hotel. Where is life been Right up there, for very, very, very near the top. Um, don't know how, how it couldn't have ranked up there, um, but it was um, like it was incredible, an incredible atmosphere, and just an incredible experience all around for the for the whole day. I think probably um, just the overcoming of the challenge because it was a great challenge. It was always always going to be an incredibly difficult. Um, Feet to kind of kind of overcome having them them in Dublin, having never beat them in Dublin. That was obviously always in the back of our mind, or was in the back of my mind. Um, but like to overcome that, I, I find that the most satisfying thing. In comparison to Chicago, where does it rate among the teammates that you've been talking to since? You know, how have you compared the two? Yeah, I think. Uh, Chicago, the guys were over the moon, completely delighted with it. But at the weekend there, it's kind of. Uh, I would say it would probably act as a reassurance as well. Um, a lot of people might have said, yeah, we got one over them in Chicago. But it's a, it was a one-off almost, but to be able to back it up again um, two years later to, to show that we're still learning, we're still getting better, we're still kind of um, learning from past performances, whether it be in the Six Nations, um, whether it be the loss in, in Australia in summer tour, we're constantly trying to get better and constantly looking to improve ourselves and, and being able to beat New Zealand again probably gives us some sort of, um, like I said, reassurance that we are we are continuing to, to better ourselves. I suppose that's the key. It was pretty much a full-strength New Zealand team playing you know, pretty well, although they didn't score a try. That was a good New Zealand performance. Look, I'm sure they'll go away and look at their game and they'll see bits and pieces that they could have capitalised on better but but I thought our defence on the whole was incredible. I thought um the boys did a real good job out there and, and they, they New Zealand got a bit of ball towards the end of the game and they just couldn't seem to seem to break us down. I'm sure they'll be kicking themselves and I'm sure they'll use this as maybe a bit of fuel in the future. Um, um and, and they will realise when they look back at it that, that there were opportunities there that they maybe didn't capitalise on but uh, I think they, they did throw it at us, throw it uh, all at us pretty hard, and, and I think we dealt with it quite well. Has there been a conversation about, uh, I suppose, quelling expectation uh, within the camp and beyond? I know it's very, very difficult considering the hype surrounding before and after the game and, and all that's happened since. Yeah, look, I, th I think <clears throat> internally, I think we know that. We know the quality of players that we've got. We know the quality of training, the quality of coaching staff. Everything that everything's done around us is to the highest standard possible, and and, and everyone working in our tight knit group uh, of management and players. Everyone's trying to be the best, and all, everyone's trying to consistently striving for for to meet everyone's expectations, as you're saying. And and I think a weekend like that at the weekend is is um, sort of a bit of a payday, giving everyone back a bit of thanks for, for uh, all the effort that's been put in. And then that's not just included, inclusive of the 23 on the day or the, the coaches that are there on the day. It's it's, it's all round. It's a, it's an effort. And I think something wasn't this Saturday, it was last Saturday with the likes of Will Addison, who stepped in, who wouldn't have been seen um, as uh, if he wasn't called in last minute. And he stepped in, I felt, relatively seamlessly. He did his first, first start and played really well. And a win over Argentina, a bit of a grisly win. But but Will Addison's name wouldn't have been mentioned if it hadn't been a, a slight tweak for, for Robbie. Um, and it's, it's those guys who are working off the field who don't get the glory all the time and, and don't get to take the, the any of the 23 match day jerseys who are consistently plugging away. They're down there training at the minute. They're they're always working to, to prepare the team to the best of their ability. And... and I think it, it's like I said, it's nice for weekends like that for it to pay off for for everyone. Mm, unbelievable performance. Do you feel you can get even better? Look, I, don't get me wrong. We're going to go, and we haven't actually got sat down to review the game all together yet. Um, as forwards, we've sat down a wee bit and looked at a few bits and pieces around the set piece. Um, there are things that need corrected that we didn't do right in the game, and we can just continue to work work on ensuring that that those bits and pieces aren't going right. It, 
it's an old kind of cliche that there's never a perfect game of rugby, but like you can strive towards it and you can continue to to try and rule out any of those wee creases that that, that may be pop, cropping up in games and and don't get me wrong, we will definitely have have work ons and and to be training work ons and training for this week. You talked about it being a reassurance, the, the fact that you actually went to win the game on Saturday evening. But does it change your expectations now for the next year? I mean, there's probably always a voice in your head, somewhere in the back of your head when you're playing New Zealand, says, there's a chance they're going to win this game. But the fact that you've actually gone beat them now, does that change your, what you think you can do over the next 12 months? Yeah, well, if, if you look over the, the past number of seasons, or hasn't been anyone we haven't been able to beat, that's excluding, excluding Saturday there. Um, so we kind of knew in the back of our head that we're able to do it. I, th- I think it's a reassurance in, in ways that that you know if you put in the you know if you put in the hard work that you will get rewards for it, and, and the rewards are sitting there to be taken for, for for all the hard work. The guys I thought who who started the weekend did a fantastic job and, and broke them down, and 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 I think kind of New Zealand for parts of it kind of weren't really sure about what to do or the intensity at which they started. Um, but but in terms of the expectation going forward, I think if if we <coughs> if our results match the amount of effort that the boys put in and, and, and going back again to not just the twenty three in the pitch for the whole squad and all the management, um, I think we'll be happy with with whatever we're expected of us. If you get what I mean. Yeah, look, I, I suppose it's probably something that I'm, I haven't really given a huge amount of thought to. You. It, it'll probably start to properly sink in what you're what you're talking about there, probably during the Six Nations or post Six Nations. Um, uh, I know the World Cup. Yeah, it seems so far away, like, far away for us at the minute. A lot of games we play between now and then. I'm sure it will come around very, very fast. And when it does come around, I'm sure it will come around with a lot of expectation and a lot of. Um, Big performances, um, hoping to be seen. However, I guess that's something that we'll just have to deal with as as it comes along, and and the performances leading up to the World Cup, um, will probably indicate how we're dealing with the, the pressure of the expectation you're talking about. When it comes to those effort levels, how pleasing was it to get through that kind of 15, 20 minute spell because the All Blacks were coming at you and not concede a try? Yeah, look, I think Andy Farrell has. has got a real good uh, <coughs> defensive strategy in place um, and I think that's something that, that I'm sure he'll be very proud of, his achievement at the weekend and being able to, to defend amongst the team who everyone's working hard for each other and, and be able to hold out the old blacks again knowing how, how competitive and how dangerous the team they are, we will take great confidence in that and we'll look forward to being challenged again by, by teams. Um, a similar standard and I think that's the only time you do get tested is when you're up against your big your big uh, test matches um, when, when you have the, the quality of opposition trying to do that to you and I think that's really, where it really shows the hard work. When it comes to Andy's ability in that respect he's basically stopped the All Blacks twice now in getting tries in successive years that's a hell of an achievement personally for him. Yeah like I, I think I say he'll be very pleased with with how the weekend went, and he'll be pleased with all, all the lads who put in the hard work to make his good work come to fruition. And and I think that's it's a pretty just testament to how good a coach he is, and, and, and how well he gets all the boys um, singing off the same thing sheet. And in um, no, they're disappointed not to start the game on Saturday, but was there a discussion with Joe last week in terms of any areas of the game that he needed to improve, or a reason why he came back? Um, I had a chat with Joe. And, Obviously, he's the coach. I would chat with him quite a bit, um, and Simon Easterby. Obviously, the line out against there was a couple of two or three line outs were were plucked from us against uh, um, Argentina and uh, New Zealand are a massive set piece. They put a lot of pressure on the set piece, and, and like Dev's fantastic in the line out, and I've learned so much from Dev over the over the last number of years being with him. And and Dev's played against the All Blacks before and beaten them, calling the line out excellently. So. 
like it's perfect logic to be able to slip someone in there to line it one week doesn't go as well as you'd like it to slip someone in there and and I thought he Dave did a brilliant job again the weekend. Ian's obviously as uh, obviously Sam's been obviously the rest of us will wait to see what Joe Smith's decision will be in the next two weeks. You know, in the back of your mind, is there any kind of sense of unease over what he will decide after the next week of the World Cup? Uh, no, actually, I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. Um, I know for the time being, Joe is 100% committed to the squad, and, and if he does decide to, to move elsewhere, I have no doubt in my mind, right up until the last minute Joe Schmidt is, is in the job, he will be 100% committed to, to anything that's happening. But as thoughts of, of what's happening, I haven't really put any mind in it now. You mentioned, okay, last one. Uh, you mentioned those guys down there training this morning. Does what happened on Saturday just add to that? Does it actually drive those lads who are not in that 23 to uh, to push that bit harder and, and make the competition places more mostly? Yeah, look, <clears throat> similar to what I mentioned about Will there, everyone's working hard to get an opportunity. There's some lads here down there training away only have single-figure caps, but will, will break into the squad inevitab- inevitably over the next number of years working hard to get there may make that happen sooner for them. For example, I keep going back to Will Addison's point, the point on Will Addison. He got drafted in for his second cap when he probably was 23rd man, probably could have taken the foot off the accelerator a bit on Tuesday afternoon when he realised he wasn't going to be in the 23, eased off and kind of just wound down for the week. Whereas he stayed on the ball, trained really well all week, and, and that's what Joe likes to see. And Joe likes to see people putting in that extra effort, and then he's rewarded on match day, and 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 all and has a good performance. And then before you know it, you start trying to work your way up the pecking order because the only really way you kind of get in get in the door is having good performances at, at test level, um, and I think that's how. If you look at the team that Joe selects, it, it's boys who, who do perform for him. Is that okay. what James Ryan? I mean, does even you does he continue to improve? Oh, I think I think he's an absolutely phenomenal player. I see that even last week, um, training away off off the back of a tough game, incredible shift he put against Argentina. I'm sure his body was sore all week, but he plugged away all week, and then again there at the weekend. So, flip, he's um, some work rate and some some engine on him.